idea and I had money and I it was I literally remember like not getting a supreme drop and I was like, alright, screw it, I'm just gonna make a shirt. Fire. Um and my first shirt was in Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta wears this pink shirt mm-hmm. that says bad man on the back. Okay. Um and I just wanted a shirt that said black man. What's good? It's your boy OG Illa, and I'm here with Alex the Human. Um, you may know him from things like The Spot or Insert Name Clothing. How you doing today, man? Good, man. Good. 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 Glad to be here. Yes, sir. I'm glad to have you, man. I've seen a lot of your work. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Actually, you got some of some of my favorite shoes on. Um, so let let let's let's uh start from how this thing got started. Um, I saw you make a tweet. You said you wish there was more publications to cover fashion and music in Richmond, or in VA, uh, unbiasedly. Yeah. Um, what do you feel is uh, the problem with that right now? Um, I would just say that, it, it was funny even tweeting that, because yeah. I didn't expect yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you, many people to start saying stuff under yeah, it. Yeah. I, uh, I don't realize sometimes how, I guess, fast Twitter can be. Yeah. But for me, it's just one of those things where I love, like, um, Modern Notoriety, and there's a couple other pages where, and there, there's Virginia publications, too, where they will capture stuff really well. Their, their pages is set up nicely. Yeah. Um, it's something where I want to repost it because of how their page is set up yeah. and how they present whatever they're capturing or whatever the article is. But they don't cover... Uh, a decent amount of stuff. It's yeah. very. You it just seems very. Do is it, is it, you feel like it's like very niche, like to to one specific style, or do you feel like it's catering to people who they're like friends with? Uh, like that. Okay. So like people they're friends with. Um, the people who it's like more worth posting because they already kind of have that buzz. Okay, I got you. Where okay. it's like it's not worth diversifying everything just you know what I'm saying yeah okay I, I understand that I, I think uh, as a musician um, I could definitely relate to that uh, you know especially you know when you're coming up you're hungry for it you know what I'm saying and you want uh, you you, do, you it's, everybody thinks it's just a, you know you want attention but it's really it's like yo I work really hard you know what I'm saying I just like some type of validation some type of you know notoriety for you know the type of things that I've been working on you know and, and there's nothing wrong with that at all and even even on a level of not even personally, like not even personally wanting notoriety. My biggest thing when I tweeted that was just, I follow a lot of different, I I live in, I'm from Richmond. Yeah. Went to school in George Mason. So I've lived in Fairfax in Northern Virginia. Okay. I live in Newport News right now. So I've been in pretty much kind of the- You've been in all the, yeah, yeah, all the settings in VA. Yeah, and so I follow a a lot of different creatives, a Mm -hmm. lot of different musical artists. And there's so many, Cool people. I feel like I personally repost where I just am surprised that uh, pages don't cover them. Okay. And so for me, it's just like I know what Virginia has to offer, and if there was a hub that actually tried to convey that yeah. in, a, in a whole, yeah, um, we would be on the map. Yeah. Because people would, people would, people are lazy. That was my thing. So like, if there was a page that covered all of the clothing designers in or in Virginia, yeah. or just the ones that they kind of feel like are doing cool things, yeah. and whenever they have drops posting that stuff, you would start to have a, a hub where the lazy people can at least say, all right, well, I'm gonna go to that page and I can see what Virginia has to offer, yeah, kind of. But without people, with, with these pages kind of making it a bias to, I'm just gonna kind of cover the 757, or I'm just going to kind of cover my friends, or I'll just cover yeah. people from Nova. Yeah. Um, or same with Richmond. I'm just going to cover these certain people from Richmond. You're kind of limited in yourself. Yeah, it's just yeah. super limited. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, at the music shop, shameless plug over here, Curve, uh, <laughs> we try to do our best to, you know, um, cover as many people as, as possible. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I will say it's, uh, it's definitely a task. You have to, uh, you have to be tapped in. Sure. Um, and you have to be willing to, to learn, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, the, the people I know off the top of my head is not even close to how many people are actually, you know, out here working, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so let's, you know, uh, I just want to 
uh, you know, clear that up a little bit because I know um, you definitely have a good following on Twitter. Uh, you definitely have a good following with your clothes, uh, clothing company. So let's 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 backtrack a little bit. Um, uh, where are you from? So I'm from Richmond. Virginia. Okay. You, which high school you go to? Harvard. Okay, that's cool. I went to Taco, so that's dope. So did he. Um, yeah, uh, West End, West End. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, uh, and then you went to George Mason. Did you go to George Mason? Well, Mason. GM, <laughs> <laughs> Did you go to George Mason to study fashion? No. Oh, so, okay. um, long story short, I I didn't get into UVA. Applied there. My okay. sister went there. Okay. Um, shout so, out to your sister. Yeah, shout out to my sister. I yeah. uh, love her. Real <laughs> smart. <laughs> Uh, she was the studious one, so she got into there, and my dad was like, "Oh, you got this is, um, legacy, you know, yeah. just apply, you know." Yeah. And I was like, "I'm probably not gonna get in, but <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, okay." It like, like I had like I had like a three point oh, like yeah, you know, it, was, yeah. it was decent. It's good, but like, you know, UVA, yeah. they got crazy That's, standards, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, didn't get into there. I applied to ODU and George Mason, and I got into ODU, and Thank I got you. to George Mason. Okay. My mom did not want me to go to ODU. <laughs> she just was not with it. She's like, I, and, and also I had a lot of friends that uh, went there. Yeah. So I ended up going to George Mason. Okay. Um, cool. And yeah, I went to. I ended up going to VCU. You went to George Mason, so that's really cool. Um, uh, I think a lot of people from uh, our area kind of went to one of those three schools. Yeah. At, at VCU, ODU, or GMU. Right. So that's pretty cool. Um, so. What what kind of what kind after college? What kind of led you into doing the fashion thing? So it started in college. So okay, um, insert name really just started because I was buying Supreme. Like I I started working when I was in school. Okay, um, and so I had money to kind of just throw away and buy Supreme stuff. But every time I wanted to buy it, it would just sell out. Yes, and it was just annoying. It was just getting ridiculous at that point. And yeah. so this was my what was it junior year of college. Um, so like 2016 and I just started I had an idea and I had money and I it was I literally remember like not getting a supreme drop and I was like all right screw it I'm just gonna make a shirt fire um, and my first shirt was in Dragon Ball Z Vegeta wears this pink shirt mm -hmm. that says bad man on the back okay um, and I just wanted a shirt that said black man mm, but okay. was still that same like pink yeah uh, and I also just like the idea of like in the show, the progression of Vegeta is like a really arrogant and selfish person to when he's wearing this shirt, he's like a family man. And like, oh, okay, gotcha. it's like a complete transformation. It's just funny because he's like, always likes to be a hard ass, but he has a pink shirt on. So yeah. <laughs> um, it kind of fit with like, it just fit with some things that I felt like I was going through or yeah. whatever. So I made that shirt, but at the time you have to make multiple. Yeah. I never knew how to yeah. like just get a sample. Yeah, you know, like those places want you to do 12. Yeah. So. Got 12 of those shirts made, um, did a shoot with one of my friends from high school, and that was cool too, like being, you know, like just being a genuine person, like yeah. you keep those connections. Like me and him were, have always been kind of cool, yeah. um, but we hadn't talked in a while, but yeah. hit him up, we did a shoot, shot uh, Nick Vega okay. for that. I've heard of him before. Yeah. yeah. Um, and posted it up and they sold out. And it was just, it was like. <laughs> so how, how did that feel that going from from not being able to get the Supreme shirt because it was selling out to now people can't, I can't, sometimes I miss your drops, it, like, and it'd be an hour. So that's, the the funny thing is like, um, cause I really want the Chappelle shirt. Right. Yeah. So. And the Iverson shirt. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, so what, what, what I learned when I first started out was just like, I could only afford to do the, making clothes, you learn a lot of different things. But when yeah. I first started out, I did 25 and sold out. And especially, okay. I felt like, it, part of it was like, cool idea, cool design, but it was also the hype about like, oh, Alex is like making clothes. Yeah. Um, I don't, I didn't sell out every time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, your entire, bit, your, uh, you might not sold out every time. Your entire site is sold out right, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> the, I teeter between wanting to buy a full stock of something mm -hmm. and then selling it mm -hmm. versus like trying to do pre-orders. So like this Chappelle shirt was up for the weekend. Okay. But after the weekend, I took it down because it's like I just get, you know, give you the chance to order throughout this time gotcha. period okay. and then get those orders in. Um, so it's like it doesn't instantly sell out. So okay. pe I try and give people a chance that I would want. Like if Supreme did that and just yeah. said, all right, well, I'm going to give you the weekend. 
Okay. That would be a lot more fair to me than like. Yeah, yeah, they're you know, they're gone almost. Some of their stuff is gone almost instantly. In the box and yeah. stuff like that too. So it's just like it, you know, that type of stuff happens. But um, that's where I went, and I just started making clothes. Started making more. Um, it just started to make sense to get like yeah. multiples of things because things were going pretty good, yeah. and then um, the following just started growing. Um, but I didn't intend for it to be a brand, so that's why it's called a certain name. Like I was just, yeah. I just made. I tweeted the other day, like, I literally just make this stuff for myself, really. Yeah, but well, I, I think it's really cool because um, it leaves it open to interpretation. Like, yeah. you know, it, and you're not really forcing your name on anybody. Like, insert name to me kind of leaves it to be like, well, this, I can be whoever I want to be in this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that's really cool. Um, so, the first time I ever found out about you uh, was the Flays. Okay. The, the, the white Air Force ones, um, Mike Waves, uh, he talks about these things every time we have a conversation. Yeah, I don't know, I, he always does. Yeah, yeah, he, he loves these shoes so much. Um, what, did, did you, I don't, I don't know much about your story before him, but I feel like that was a big transition for you when you dropped those. Um, do you feel like that was a, a big moment for you? Yeah, that definitely was a big moment. Yeah. Um, everything is just, I mean, like I said, everything is just stuff that I want. But as the brand grew and I realized kind of, started to understand like, this is actually what I'm really good at. Yeah. Um, and I started to take it more serious. I started to feel, at that point when I dropped the forces, I was like, nah, I know the shit. Yeah. And That's a good I feel like um, these brands need to see. Yeah. And so I want a deal from Nike. What's the, what better way can I get a deal than make a shoe, drop it, and, yeah. right, and prove to them I can create mm-hmm. something and make people love it. Yeah. And, that's what the Virginia forces were. Yeah, and uh, if you haven't seen them, go look them up. Um, I don't. Are they for sale right now? No, they're not for sale. So you're you're shit out of luck. <laughs> um, so am I. Um, so uh, for here at the music shop, we you know we really focus on music. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I don't think that um, one can exist without the other. I don't think fashion can exist without music. I don't think music can exist without fashion. Um, curbs. How do we how do we word this question exactly? Um, I would just say, like, do you think that <clears throat> clearly they they influence one another? Yeah. But do you do you think that, in your opinion, does music inform fashion more, or does fashion inform music more? Okay, so you all told me to think about this, <laughs> and my honest answer is that they are they work simultaneously. Okay. Um. I. I say that because I feel like in different areas or in different times, clothes help push your influence Mm -hmm. or or add an influence to the music. But at the same time, actually, I'll change it. It is the music. It's the music for sure, at least for me, because when I'm sitting here thinking about like clothing in general, um, up to a certain point, my style was very influenced by the people, the musical artists that I liked. So great. That, that's that's gonna that was gonna be my next question. So no, keep keep going. Um, keep going. So like, Kid Cudi, Wale. Okay. Those, um, like just those were just like my. my like, in a um, VA artist, I was gonna expect you to say uh, Pharrell. Oh, and um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, um, and then, um, uh, what do you feel about uh, Ye, Yeezy, Kanye? Oh, he's in my top five. Um. For me, for me, for me, that was a, a big transition uh, where I think that um, where rappers are dictating a lot about fashion. Um, yeah. Um, not, I'm not. I know there was obviously we there was people before him. I mean, you had rappers wearing you know oversized jerseys and throwback right. jerseys and stuff like that. But when Kanye started getting people to wear pink polos mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying, start getting them outside of the streetwear and start getting them in the high fashion, I thought that that was a, a pivotal point for like music uh, kind of influencing the fashion. Yeah, he's literally in the fashion houses. Like yeah. interning I mean, I'm at, literally wearing interning right at Louis Vuitton and yeah. all that, yeah. And then he made his own. Yeah, yeah his, his lead designer, uh, Virgil, ended up going to um, Louis Vuitton and you know, he has his own line now with the off-white. Right. Yeah, so I think that, uh, I do agree that I think that um, you really can't have one without the other, but I think now we're in a in a influencer type of field, so like the music kind of dictates where the fashion goes. 
Um, so, you know, because you got even uh, the younger generation with people like Playboy Cardi, who has, you know, people wearing V-Loan and, you know, stuff, right. stuff along that line. Um, let's let's uh, tap on something a little bit. Uh, so, how do you feel about uh, uh, Pharrell and, you know, um, ice cream and vape and, you know, kind of that, that influence that uh, with BBC and stuff like that? How do you feel about that? Um, those moments in VA history in the fashion in the fashion industry. I feel like it's it's huge, but people don't realize like I don't people don't attribute it to Virginia. Okay. Like I don't feel like people would attribute BBC necessarily yeah. to Virginia, you know, yeah. stuff like all of that, even though it's tied to Pharrell. Yeah. Um and it's funny, I just realized like when I brought up my artists, like I I'm, I'm twenty five, so I do I did love Pharrell, like yeah. I or do love Pharrell yeah. and all of that, but for me, when I was like coming of age, um, like Wale and those people, really, yeah. At my, at my, uh, I mean, I think, I think Wale is still a huge uh, influence for fashion. You know, especially yeah. shoes. You know what I'm saying? And he uh, he talks a lot about sports in his uh, um, his raps as well too, and he ties that directly almost to what he wears and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah I would agree. But for Pharrell is just. As a creative, as a human, it's just um, <laughs> yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, he's always going to have that stamp in Virginia, of course. You yeah. know, music-wise too. Like, but I, I feel like I love um, Pharrell, or I love music and the clothing and how it goes hand in hand because you literally can create a timeline with some clothes, and I and you could probably guess the year. If I just picked out certain types of clothes and yep. put it there, you know, if, I'm, if I have some LRG yeah. full zip hoodies with the skeleton all over it, you're probably gonna guess like you know, later 2000s stuff yeah. like that. If I'm if I'm doing like bootleg rap tees, that's where it kind of gets cool because you might think the 90s when it came out, yeah. but that's now cyclical where it's come back and we've got people, Fashion you know, we've got yeah. hip hop people um, wearing bootleg rap tees now the prices are like thousands of dollars for like a t-shirt and yes. it, you you it, on that timeline you wouldn't really know yeah um, so that's what's kind of cool yeah um, so that actually kind of ties me into my next few questions for you so um, and I want to get this right uh, a lot of your ideas and or, um, or designs are you know around these moments in VA history you know with the Pharrell and the Iverson Missy um, Missy you know, um, what would you say? I guess how I'm trying to say this exactly is: uh, Do you feel that uh, that Virginia itself is is inspirational to those designs, or would you say that, or is more importantly, these particular people? Uh, uh, it's both. Okay. Um, those people are spe are special to Virginia, and yes. then my goal with my clothing is to create um, something for people from Virginia to feel they can wear and represent this area yeah. with pride. Uh, but at the same time, it's cool enough that anyone would want to wear it. So um, that was also a big part of it. It's like, people love wearing, you don't even have to be from LA, but you're a, a lot of people have an LA Dodgers fitted. Yes. You don't have to be from New York, but a bunch of people. Those, those you know, designs are, are timeless. It's timeless. Yeah. Um, Joe Fresh Goods, he makes clothing that has Chicago on it. Yeah. Anyone, and people buy it just because of the yeah. design. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, and I think there's a little bit of, uh, even when, um, I, you know, the LA and NY design have been around forever, but even when they, they were made, I'm sure there was a lot of pride in, you know, being from that area and really wanting to represent that to the fullest, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and, and that actually ties into a little bit of what we just talked about. Um, Jay Z even said in a line, "I made the NY fitted more famous than the Yankees can," and, and and there's a little bit of truth to that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we don't have teams and logos and stuff in Virginia. We got artists. Yeah. So my man has got designs built around transcendent artists. Man. Yeah. Alan I well, you know, he's not an artist, but Alan Iverson is universal. Man. Yeah. Missy I mean, Elliott is a Super Bowl type performer. I yeah. mean, like everybody can rock with that worldwide. Yeah. And that's VA. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Allen Iverson is important to the culture as a whole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? he uh, He's not just, you know, as much as he's a basketball player, he's transcended that, you know, time and time again. 
Um, it's like moments. Like, yeah. yeah. It's Getting more his hair the, braided in the middle of the game. Obviously, the practice rant. Stepping over um, uh, Ty Lue. Ty Lue. Like, you know, uh, even beating the Lakers in that, in that first game in that playoff series. You know what I'm saying? Um, being from Georgetown and inking a Reebok sneaker deal. Like, that, that, a lifetime deal that, you know, actually is going to make him even richer when he's 50 than, you know, he was when he was 18. And, you know, beating the league, you know, just all the things that, that, that entail him, uh, you know, have transcended basketball. And, and I think that's important that, because um, you, you said something earlier, and I want to tap back into that. And that's, uh, I don't think Virginia gets enough credit for not just the fashion industry, but the music industry, the sports industry. Um, we kind of dictate a lot of the sounds, a lot of the, the waves that, that come, that, that end up being, you know, worldwide. Virginia, uh, Virginia's not too far off from being like a, like a, almost like a LA. Yeah. You know, like, um, or just like a bigger, bigger, more known area. Yeah. We, once they, I mean, once we legalize weed, <laughs> I, I feel like that's one step where it's just like, what, what are we kind of missing? Like, we're not too far off. Uh, and there's lots of different, there's different pockets. That's what's cool. Like, this is, this is technically the South, but you know, like, yeah. we, the creative scene here alone I, shows I like you that it it's the, not. <laughs> yeah, I like to call it the Middle East because yeah. it's like, it's, it's, the, it's the capital of the South, but it's really the middle of everything. And we have 64 here, we have 95 here, and we have 85 here, which takes you, can take you to almost anywhere in the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or 250 as well, which is broad, you know, it can take you to California. So it's like, you know, we, we're we tapped into everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And and you to get from one place to the other, you almost have to go through here. You know what I'm saying? Right. When it comes to the East Coast. Um, you know, and, and we've had, we've had quite a few successful artists. I mean, we talked about Missy, we've had Pusha uh, in, the, in the clips, Pharrell, we talked about that. Um, We've had Trey Songs and Chris Brown. You know, these people have gone, you know, universal. Um, do you feel that um, they do a good job uh, of letting people know um, that they're from VA and what VA has to offer? And this is your opinion. This is, you know, um, if somebody else feels different, they feel different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say not, no. Okay. And I, I would say, I, yeah, I'd just say, like, no, not really. Okay. Like, um, I guess Trey Songs kind of does. I don't keep up with that stuff that much either, you know? Like, I kind of feel like um, they don't, and so I just stop keeping up with that stuff at yeah. a certain point. And it's not that it's an issue, like, they're big, they're bigger artists. I feel like uh, Missy Elliott, what I see is it, uh, whenever Virginia artists send her stuff, yeah. like, if it gets a good amount of traction, or even if it doesn't, yeah. she, she does still seem to, like, respond to that type of stuff, yeah. which is cool. She um, seems tapped in. She seems, she seems yeah. tapped in. Um, something in the water is huge. Got to give the water was huge. I, I, I think that I think that um, a lot of uh, a lot of people's uh, strife with that was that it's it's a huge thing, but it it didn't seem to include as many VA artists as they would have liked. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to kind of you know take take you know right. to go with the bat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I did see you know obviously COVID pre prevented this from happening. But the last lineup did have a lot more VA. Nick F. Nick F. And there was a few others. Um, Mas Masego? Yeah, Masego. Yeah, and, you know, that's another thing. A lot of these artists who are bubbling, you know, I don't want to say uh, they're not mainstream, but, you know, Masego and Nick and, you know, some of those guys, Young Mo, they're kind of like bubbling on that, you know, could blow, but, you know, very underground and have very good support systems. And they seem to do, to do a better job of, you know, always representing where they're from and whatnot. So. Yeah, I think I, I think Alex is saying like, yo, you know, some of these if Trey Songs put Nicholas F on a on one of his joints, that would really help out. Like, <laughs> it, it could, yeah, it could. It's yeah. just like, um, I personally, I personally know that I will always hold th this place is so special to me. Yeah. So it's certain, um, it's certain things like I'll always come back here. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I I might not always live here, but yeah. I probably end up. With, I probably will. My girlfriend does yeah. not want to live here her whole life, but I I love it here. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. Um, this is a great place to raise kids. Yeah, it is. like I I love it here. So I th I, I want to I want to represent this area to the fullest, and but throughout my whole career. Yeah. Like if I was at Chris Brown's level, 
I would be doing something here once a year. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, it's, I don't even feel like they have to do a lot. But Part of the just, argument for Chris Brown was that he blew up so early that he actually has spent more time out of VA mm -hmm. than he has here. You know, he's, he blew up at like 14, you know what I'm saying? So he didn't get to have that same type of, like, whereas me and you, we spent, you know, 20 plus years here. You know what I'm saying? That's so true. it's it's a little bit, you know. I guess you, you sit there and say, I'm a country boy from Tappahannock. VA is where I reside. And then it's yeah. like, uh. <laughs> yeah, but, but that, that is I like that was also was that was also fourteen years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's and, been you know, in LA for like sixteen. You know, well, I mean, years. he blew up, but, you know, immediately, and you know that, and then once you blow up, you typically, you know, don't stay here. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it, I, I guess the thing, it just depends on the person because you don't technically owe anything to this area. Um, I guess it's just like I love this area so much. I think that's a I think yeah. that, that's a thing that's misunderstood a lot is people feel like they're owed something, but right, you're not. But it's you know I think also it takes my my biggest thing is you know I have these discussions with uh, different artists from VA and stuff and um, you know different influencers. It, it's like we got to be the ones to champion each other for sure. You know like uh, this is a good start. You know what I'm saying? But like. You know, if you do see a dope artist or another fashion designer, you know, and, and it seems like you did something similar to that with the spot in general is where y'all, um, there's seven of y'all, y'all yeah. teamed up, y'all were all uh, visionaries, all hardworking people, and y'all said, hey, how can we help each other? And y'all got the spot. Yeah. So now that actually we're here at this spot, can you explain to us a little bit about what the spot is and, you know, what y'all created that for? For sure. Yeah. So um, the spot is a multi-purpose, like creative hub. Yeah. Uh, we have retail in the front, and so it's it's uh, set, owned by seven black men, but it's six brands because okay. it's two brothers, Brian and Derek, from, over at Rotate. Yes. Um, and so, Actually, I just shot a video there. Uh, I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I saw you at the backdrop. Yeah. Right <laughs> um, it was sweet. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. But um, it's seven of us, and we came together because it's like we all had our own respective brands. Um, Tyler, screen prints, me and him have been cool for a little bit. James and I have been cool for years, like since high school. Um, I've been friends with Cam, He's, he lives up in Nova. Cam he, from, um, from Atmos? No, uh, Cam from Sybil. Okay, gotcha. He's, yeah, he had a store called Sybil in Northern Virginia. Okay. Uh, in Old Town Manassas. Oh yes, actually I know, uh, sorry, Nick Moore and Con, yep, yep, they yep. used to perform up there all the time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, City of Virginia. Yeah, that's the so, VA connect, baby. Um, and that's that's like the whole thing. Like all seven of us are people who try and congregate over with with Virginia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so we came together to to create the spot to just one host our brands and have like a brick and mortar because online is cool, but people love like people love that. I personally love that whole like walking into a store, a cool boutique. Yeah. Uh, I love thrifting, and so walking into somewhere that either I've been to before and I know is gonna have some cool stuff, mm -hmm. or if you're visiting Richmond and you were walking by, like yeah. I wanted to have a space where all the coolest stuff or a lot of cool yeah. stuff by cool designers were hugged, um, and that was all of our idea. And then on top of that, um, I do creative direction. Um, I was gonna get into that too. Yeah, I do creative direction. Um, Tyler does design, creative direction. He screen prints. Cam, same thing. Yeah. Um, James does design. Doku's an artist. Okay. He does design. Oh uh, yeah, Doku actually helped me design my hooligan life logo. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Full, full, circle, circle, yeah, full, full circle, baby. Full circle, full circle, baby. Uh, and to keep it, you know, what I'm saying, keep our money circulating in the community within yeah. all of us. Yeah. Um, and so we came together, started this to have our, our clothes here, but at the same time we have a screen printing studio in the mm -hmm. back, photography um, studio in the back, so you can like take pictures. Yeah. People have done podcasts in here, stuff like that. Um, but it's really to just be a hub, not only to host clothing, but for people to utilize however they see fit. Okay. Um, we have that long table there because we sit chill we do our work we design but yeah. i want you to be able to walk in and if you want to shop you can shop but if you are someone who's like trying to start your own brand yeah. you're an artist and you want to do creative you need help with creative direction yeah pull up you know we we're we are it's like coming to chill with your homies pull yeah. up we help you design that stuff we'll, we'll talk about it think it think about it with you um I think exactly. you said it, I think you said it best like creative hub. Exactly. Like you know you come here you can network but you can yeah. also work. You yeah. can you can shop if you, you see something that, 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 you know inspiring or something that you exactly. rock with. Um, do you, um, is it an opportunity like so say uh, a local designer wants to put clothes in here is that something that y'all allow? We're about to transition into doing that. That's so awesome. we we really want to 
do it the right way. Yeah. Um, and so when we do it, we're gonna probably figure out kind of doing like a certain amount of brands at a time yeah, and, absolutely. and sort of really pushing two to three brands yeah. for the month um, and really showcasing them then switching to the next Super three. Yeah. Um, so it's not like, override. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's not like, oh, you're only giving these certain people a chance. Yeah. Um, everybody would have a fair chance to yeah. That's awesome. sell their stuff. That's really cool. So um, that's a little bit about the future of, of the spot. Um, um, before we get into the creative direction thing, because I, I, I love, that's kind of what I do for a living as well. Um, what is the future for you? What do you got lined up for uh, Insert Name? Um, I've been doing a lot of artist merch lately, like okay. creative direction for that. Okay. And that's what I really wanted to get into. Okay. Um, I was talking with somebody and it was just like, artists at a certain level, you're not gonna make that as much money on your music, but if you have some cool music and your merch is fire, yeah. Your your clothes or your your music might get put out there more because people are like, "Dang, this merch yeah. is fire!" And then they are like clicking on it for that. Um, but also, you're making money off your merch. Yeah, and I think, so I think that's a huge thing that uh, that artists don't understand. Um, the the music is the intro to the bag, you know. But the the things that surround it, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 building your brand, out. yep, is 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 the is where you actually make the money. Um, so. What, uh, I love that we're having this conversation because, you know, I, again, this is a music shop, so it's about music. Ha, what have you found uh, inspirational in that? And what have you found to be some of your, uh, the things that you don't like about that uh, creative direction of these artists? Um, and you don't have to, you know, name drop anybody. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. You know. um, I, I love, like, working with artists because I put their music on. I put their music on mm -hmm. and try and get into their mind. And I just like, especially living in the 757 right now and yeah. driving back and forth here, I'll put someone's song on loop for like 50, just 50 times. Damn. And then just like, by that time you get by that you time, know all the words. Yeah, by that time I'm like, I know all the words and like, I feel like I've gotten an understanding and then I'll just go and design something based off of that and what okay. we'll kind of talk about. Um, but I, I really like that idea of being able to convey something for someone, but in my in my personal um, view, yeah. So like, I can't say right now who who it is, but I have some merch dropping um, on Friday okay. for a Richmond artist that okay. just dropped a remix to a real popular song. Okay, cool. Um, and so with that, it's like I get to capture that, but it's something that I don't think what I presented to him, I don't think he expected. Like I I yeah. bootleg something that yeah. he didn't ask for, but yeah. he loves it, and that was what's fun to me is like. Because I thrift so much, because I bootleg uh, or like bootlegs and like vintage clothing, yeah. um, I have a lot of references and sources that I can flip to make things work with a, a, an art modern day artist or yeah. artist right now or just like the stuff that I make myself. Yeah. Um, and so that's my favorite part. I guess the thing I, I don't like is um, when they don't like <laughs> what I'm doing, honestly. I think, um, that, I think that's a struggle because yeah. as a creative director myself, I. You know, one, it's it, it's a little ego. It's a little ego because, you know, we've been doing it for a certain amount of time sure. and, you know, we like what we do. Yeah. But, you know, it's hard uh, negotiating on a creative end because that's where you feel like you're, you're the strongest at. Yeah. And, and then, you know, uh, it you put in, you could put in hours, days into something and then somebody be like, nah, that's not that it. ain't it. <laughs> and and restart. Get, yeah. <laughs> all, restart all over again. Oh, man, you never get those hours back. And then... Um, yeah, I, I totally I totally relate to that. I actually just went through that with an album rollout. I've had to do that album probably five times now. You know what I'm saying? And we just don't, you know, we didn't seem to get it right. We're finally on the right page, and you know, um, you know, it, it is because like what you uh, when you say you listen to the song, you try to get in your their mind. You know, you also gotta be realistic about like you may not ever truly be in their mind yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what i'm saying and uh uh that that's hard to deal with as a, as a creative um so. i think that's the most gratifying the most gratifying part about it is once you get it completed though because it's, it's like especially the tougher ones yeah um i was working with so for creative direction um i well i guess technically i can't talk about this but i i I worked with an artist for the first time, um, yeah. it was a, a, a woman, okay. and this was my first time working with like a, a female artist, and yeah. it was different because I'm so used to thinking like a man. Yes. So to try and make something kind of like not as 
to bring in a feminine aspect that, that, yeah, to Yeah, to have some feminine, feminine energy in right. the aspect, in the art, um, yeah. Was, t- it was tough. It is, it can and, be. But it was so fun. Like, yeah. it was so gratifying uh, to finish the project and working on it. This was one of my only projects where it's like, there were a lot of revisions, a lot of like scrapped ideas, mm-hmm. and I wasn't upset. Like, it yeah. was just like cool to work on this whole thing to, um, from start to finish. Yeah. Um, and so like, it, 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 it is annoying, but uh, definitely gratifying once you kind of- Yeah, absolutely. Those and, 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 this, and when we say it's annoying, it's like, it's not annoying that they want something different or that, they, that our vision's on the line. It's annoying that like, you know, I've, like, I said, like we said, spent a lot of time on it. We thought it was going to hit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, like I hit every every dot that you said you wanted. Yeah. I thought I hit it. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's like you'd agree, but then it's sometimes it's like, okay, yeah, you did actually hit everything I asked for, but, but that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> but I just ain't it either. And so it's, it's not what I envisioned. And then having them understand, there are times where you have to explain to them like, you know, um, especially uh, with logos nowadays, people you know who want detailed logos, you gotta understand like we're in a digital era, uh, era. So having a bunch of colors and details in a logo isn't actually beneficial to your brand because you gotta you gotta think about when, where you're gonna put this logo right. in the bottom corner of a video that's this small. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a bunch of details that's gonna get lost in there. You you know even some of the biggest companies. They're going simple, simple, simple. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's hard to make something bold um, and detailed. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, that's really cool. I do want to say in price point too, because I understand where, like, because of where I'm at, like, I understand yes. price point. Yeah. But at the same time, what I feel like I'm gonna provide. I almost want to charge more, but I'm kind of like I'm at a point where I I like feel out the person and if I like you then it's like I'm not as much worried about the money because like I make I make the money I need to on my clothing yeah so creative direction is almost like I add into my it's a passion project especially if you're an artist that like I really like your music yeah um and then at the same time it's just more like adding to the portfolio to the resume so that when I go to reach out to Wale, yeah. <laughs> like let's do some merch or yeah. Pharrell or whoever, like let, can I show you this merch that I've done? Yeah. I have a, that portfolio along, Ab- with, along with bootlegs that I did of, <laughs> of Ab- the same artist. Absolutely, <laughs> and um, I think that that's a uh, I think that's overlooked and not talked about enough because it's kind of like um, you know taboo. But like uh, somebody I was talking to actually uh, Terrell online, he's an artist from Seven Five Seven. He's one of the few people he always asks for what he's, he feels he's worth. And I really respect that about him. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he doesn't mind paying other people for what he feels they're, they're worth. They're, yeah, like if you give him a price, there's no like, oh man, you know, like that. And which is, which I get, sometimes you gotta work within your budget and there's nothing wrong with that. For sure. But you know, also gotta understand that as an artist or a creative director or a graphic designer or videographer, people know their worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, the cost of, uh, uh, you know, Photoshop and Illustrator and, you know, whatever other programs that you may use, InDesign, Final Cut, Premiere Pro, you know what I'm saying? All of this stuff just adds up, you know and, what I'm saying? Uh, for the thing for me is, tr- full transparency, I don't even do the graphic design for my, like, yeah. I, I can't, I draw stick figures, <laughs> like, and everything's in my head, like I might get high and, or I will get high and then come up with like the designs and everything's in my head and I'll map it out really nicely in a puzzle, but like mm-hmm. I'll draw stick figures to represent where a person's gonna go. Yeah. Have no skill with graphic design whatsoever. And so for me, like sometimes it gets hard cause I'm not just working with like, you're not just paying me, you're kind of pay, you're paying me plus my graphic designer that yeah. I choose to do the job because yeah. I'm also picking someone that I know is gonna be good catered toward what you want. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that, that that was that's been one of my processes too. Is like you know I'm in I'm getting into illustration more, and you know um, I've been doing graphic design for a long time, but you know it takes time to learn these programs. You know, and you know as we're shooting the video, it costs money to for lights, and it costs money to have the program to edit this, and you know. Uh, like you said, you got a graphic designer, so that also costs you money to uh, freelance that or to commission that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I really think that that's something that needs to be discussed a little bit more. Um, so before before we get out of here, um, 
uh, we've, we touched on a lot of things and I really appreciate you sitting down with us. Of course, um, I appreciate you. So is there anything else that you would like to, you know, talk about or tap into, um, you know, while we're here? No, I can't think of anything. I feel like... You want to go ahead and plug your IG and your website and everything? Yeah, plug, plug yeah. my IG. Uh, personal is Alex the Human. Um, insert name company is the Instagram for the brand, and then it's the Spot VA um, on Instagram as well. Okay. We're located at Seven West Broad Street, and open Wednesday through Sunday, uh, twelve to seven. Awesome. And uh, if you're in Richmond, make sure you come check them out. Like I said, this is OG Illa, the music shop. Um, this is Alex the Human, or insert name company, um, and we appreciate everybody tuning in. Peace. Appreciate you.